So this just came in the mail. Um, it's bigger than I thought it would be. Uh, it didn't look so big in the pictures, but hey, here it is. Any guesses as to what this is? Well, if you guessed Relay uh, Core Winder, you're correct, congratulations. So from what I can tell, here's your, uh, here's the spool of wire that went on the core or around the, the iron core of the relay. And I'm not sure if the spool was supposed to mount here or here somewhere. Um, because there's this sliding thing and I imagine this sliding thing was used to somehow move back and forth so that when you were winding the relay, um, you got an even winding all the way across. Although I don't see any way that it would have been moved other than by hand. Um, it does spin, but it's noisy. So, I've got some generic motor oil that I'm going to put in this and see if I can quiet it down. Now, it's dirty. I know it's dirty. I'm going to clean it, but I just wanted to see if I can play with it first. Then I'll take a toothbrush and clean it all up. So, let's put a drop of oil in there, and a drop of oil in there, bloop, and a drop of oil in here, maybe? And... Oh. Much more quieter. Got spraying everywhere. Probably uh, grease would have been a better choice for this part. Because um, this oil is way too light and it's just making a mess everywhere. Yuck! Okay. Um, but wow, yeah, I really wanted oil. Now it looks like this part here is supposed to move in and out and you have this little locking screw. I wonder what happens if I bloop some oil in there. Bloop! Just one bloop. One bloop should be sufficient. Cool, okay. So that's freed up a little bit. And we can put this locking Dergingus back in. And this, I imagine, is where the relay coil would go, or the, the core would go on this somehow, because this is the thing that spins. And it makes sense to me that the core is what you would want to spin if you were winding wire around a core. Get this all lined up back in here nice. Push that back in a little bit. Yeah. And do a half-assed job of screwing it down. And it spins. Much more quietly now. And this is spinning with it. So yeah, it doesn't make sense to me that you'd want to spin the, the spool um, because this could just be basically sitting on an idler here and just take off as, as needed. Um, this moving bit really seems to me like, a, I don't know what I'd call it, a shuttle? Because um, as you're spinning it, you want the winding to be even all the way across, so this would move slowly to the right, 
then slowly to the left. Um, I purchased this as is, so I really don't know if we're missing any parts, and I've never seen one before, so it's totally new to me. Um, oh, another place for oil. Boop. Great, it looks like it's really happy. Now I just have to wind some, uh, some relays. Let's clean this up a little bit. Uh, let's take it over to the workbench and we'll make it pretty and we'll go from there. Okay, so I think I've gotten it down about as far as I can without doing some serious drilling. Um, this is, I believe this thing here is captive um, because it should be sliding out, but it's not. Um, so I would have to use heat or something to get that out, and I really don't want to because it's not worth it because I can clean it with it in there. Uh, same with this gear and everything, and this is captive as well. Um, this has a flange on the other side where it's been pounded in, and if I whack it with a hammer, it doesn't move at all. So again, would need some kind of heat or some way to drill it out of there. I'm not gonna bother because it. I really don't need to in order to clean this up. What I'm gonna do is I've got some Mineral spirits here. Just gonna wipe it down. So part of the thing here is I'm not trying to make it look new. I kind of don't like that. Um, I don't want it to look new. I don't want it to look like it just rolled off the assembly line. I want it to look old and used because it is old and used and that's part of its charm. So my only goal is to get it clean enough that the, the unnecessary dirt and scunge is gone. Um, and if it doesn't work completely perfectly, I'm okay with that. It's just fine by me. Um, because, again, that's not my aim here. There's a lot of channels on YouTube where I see people, like, restoring old things to like new, and, um, those always, those channels make me uncomfortable for some reason. Because, like, I don't know, what are you, what are you doing? It's, it's old, let it be old. Old things are cool because they're old. So no, I'm not trying to make this thing shiny and... And everything. I'm happy with just with merely making it not disgusting. So if you're looking for one of those, um, check it out. I'm going to turn this old ass tool into a brand new tool. You're going to be disappointed because that's not what I'm doing. But it is still nice to clean these. Um, I wonder how old this is. Uh, there's no date on it. There's no indication of a manufacturer. Uh, usually Western Electric stuff says Western Electric on it. And because they really like to brand their stuff and I don't see any indication of branding. Not on the bottom. This is obviously where it would attach to a table or a bench. I don't see any branding on the side, on the front, or on the other side. So it may not be Western Electric, it may be somebody else. Um, also, I think that by the, by the 19, you know, teens, certainly by the 20s, they would have been 
winding relays with power-driven machinery, not by hand. So I don't suspect that this thing is much newer than maybe the 1910s or so at the most. I just don't see why they would have. With the, with the amount of production, with the amount of relays they were putting out in the, in the 20s, you know, certainly in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions, I don't see how they could have wound those by hand. Even with a million little old ladies, they would have had a machine to do it. In fact, I have pictures of the machines they use, and they weren't these. So maybe it's older than that. Who knows? All right, now all we gotta do is get the chunk off of these teeth, because they are kind of gross. So I'll use the screwdriver first. Just to loosen it. And then I'll use the toothbrush thing. Still not perfect, but I can see the bottom of the grooves now. For anyone uh, watching this who wants the full sensory experience, just open up a bottle of mineral spirits and sit it right in front of your nose, and then you'll be, you know, 90% where I am right now. pin. When you're working on cars, they say never reuse the same cotter pin because it'll break and your wheels will fall off. But luckily, this isn't a car. Alrighty. Jam that bad boy back in there with totally overkill hammer. It's totally overkill. Now the hard part is getting these separated again. There we go. Cotter pin reinserted. Gears lined up okay. Overkill hammer, go over there. I got a better light at this workbench. It's just too sharp. It needs more angle. Okay, cotter pin in. I gotta do this little guy here. off. Great. Put that in the back here to secure this business. Ooh, 
Very nice. All right, now this is where the naked spool would go. To be honest, I'm not even sure what type of relay spool this would be used for winding, but if it's as old as I suspect it is, it would probably be one of the cylindrical type relays, which I think I have, I can show you. This is what I think it might have been used for, this or something similar. That's a really old style of relay. would have been used in the very early days of yore. As you can tell, this is precision machinery. Which requires only the most precise type of oil. Sweet, works great. Very nicely lubricated. Now all I need is some relays to wind. <laughs> 